What's going on, beautiful people? Machiavelli Mills TV, man. Today is a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day for so many reasons, but one reason in particular, man. Like, today is a really emotional day for me. I saw one of my best friends start at point guard for the Indiana Pacers today, Kiefer Sykes. And I promise y'all, like, tears almost came to my eyes for real. Because Kiefer is the key prime example of hard work really, really paying off. Like, no cliche bullshit. Like, Kiefer, I call him KD. As a nickname, his father, K, the late, great James Sykes Sr., his father gave him. And um, me being around Kiefer since fourth grade, I heard his father call him that. I've been calling him that ever since. Me, his brother, uh, Tuck, and, uh, and his father, right? We call him KD. So since I've known KD, man, he wanted to be a professional basketball player all his life. And when I tell y'all that brother worked at it vigorously, vigorously. He was always a small kid. People were telling him he was too small all his life, right? But he had the, the mental fortitude to say, nah, forget all that. I'm going to keep pushing. I'm going to keep pushing. He grew, grew to six feet, started dunking a ball, had an amazing handle, developed a jump shot. Like, I remember we used to go to the park and go hoop, right, at the cage over east. East side, he an east side legend, man. He went, out to, he went to high school at, uh, at Marshall on the west side, but KD really from southeast side, the southeast side of Chicago, right? So we used to go to the park, and every time we used to play, we used to play two-on-twos with people, but after, or we used to just hoop around or play one-on-one -on -one or whatever. But no matter what happened, before he left the court, he would always have to hit 10 free throws in a row. And it was something he was making himself do. He would make himself hit 10 free throws in a row before he left. And I used to be looking at him like, come on, bro, let's just go home. But he like, nah, I got to hit 10 straight free throws before I leave. That's the type of stuff that KD was doing all his life, like, to really prepare him to be a pro. He was prepping to be a pro when we were, like, in fifth and sixth grade. So to me, it was foreign to me because, like, I really didn't have that dream in me to be a hooper. For We had small, like, we, everybody wanted to be in the league. He really had that shit embedded in him, right? So... To see that now, like my brother been in the G League playing with the um the Mad Ant, the Mad Ants team. That's the Indiana Pacers G League team. And before he got that NBA, because he got he got the NBA call up uh some days ago. Before he got the NBA call up, me and him talking, and he's telling me, I really want to get called up by the Pacers, man. I feel like that's a great opportunity for me to get playing time, to show what I can do, to showcase my abilities. I really want to play for the Indiana Pacers if I get called up, right? Now, you're telling me if I get called up no matter where, it's a blessing. But I really want it to be with Indiana, you know? Um, I really want to make this Indiana thing where I feel like that's the, a great opportunity for myself. So I'm telling them, man, you know what? What's for you is for you. No matter what, you've been a hard worker all your life. You a hooper. You a dog. You a hooper regardless. You're going to get it. Just keep hooping. It's going to happen for you. The very next day, my brother gets called up by the Indiana Pacers, and I'm like, damn. Like, for real, like, wow. 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 Look at God. Look at God, for real. Look at God, man. Like, you know, to see my brother get in, check into it. Like, even before he started, this is his third NBA game. Had 10 points and five assists today. I believe one steal, one block. So proud of him, man. Like, um, but when I remember when he first got the call up and he's checking, he checked into the game for the first time and I see him looking up cause it, I'm telling you his father, his whole family believed in him for real, but his dad, man, that was his, his dog. And my father, like Kiefer's father passed away our freshman year in college. Right. And, um, his father, the late great James Sykes, he, he went to Mississippi Valley State University like me. His father's from Greenwood, Mississippi. Amazing man. When I'm talking about an active father. Active father to the the utmost, the highest degree. Picking up kids from school, taking them to practice, going to the games. Mr. Sykes was doing all of that. All of that. Everything you could think of, he was there. Taking me home, picking me up to go to Kiefer's house. I mean, taking us to, to, to dances, to parties, all of that. He was there. Taking us to Gately Stadium to go watch the football games on Friday nights when we, when we were in high school. That was his dad all the way through and through. So he's tapping his chest, pointing to the sky, thanking God and thanking just like and feel like his father watching over him. That's an emotional moment for me because I know Mr. Sykes believed in his boy. 
as much as Kiefer believes in itself. And it was really like a strong moment for me to see, man. My brother really in the league. And I'm like, wow, bro. Like, it's somebody that really, really wanted the stuff to happen and made it happen. With no, like, no excuses, no nothing. I'm going to make it happen. I don't care. People saying ain't nobody my size going to be in the league. I'm going to make it happen. I know how to score. I know how to play basketball. And I'm going to make it. And he made it. And it's like, damn, man. Like, it's a beautiful thing. It's an amazing thing to watch. And even to see it all come full circle, right? His first game he plays. Um, what's the first? Yeah. First game he plays is against the Chicago Bulls, his hometown team, right? Ironically, one of Keeper's other right hand man, Alfonso McKinney, who played at Marshall with him and played at University of Wisconsin Green Bay with him, just signed a, a, a full deal uh with the chicago bulls recently now unfortunately al is in COVID protocols right now alfonso was in COVID protocols currently so they couldn't play against each other but it's just like look at all this stuff happening man look at like look at like i like y'all i i can't explain the uh the how elated i feel right now um just watching like since he was young this is what he wanted to do and he always told people, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. And he, and he really made it, y'all. Like, today I'm on Facebook, and I, I, I shared the picture of him in the starting lineup, right? And everybody that we went to school with is just like, wow, he really, really did that. He did it. He did exactly what he said he was going to do. And he delivered. When I tell y'all, KD, one of the most genuine people I ever met in my life. Keeper is one of the most genuine people I ever met in my life. We'll give his clothes off clothes off his back for somebody. We'll give shoes to people who whoever need them. He'll give shoes to people. I'm talking about nice shoes, not raggedy shoes. Nice Jordans. Gave me several of my Jordans. All the Jordans I have came from him. Just giving them to me. Just for me being around him, being his boy for years. Just, oh man, here, bro. I got these shoes. I don't need here. Here you go. I don't need them. Here, here. He would do that, right? Um, get a let's give his clothes off his back for folks. Anybody that need help, he'll get help to him. If he can't help you, he'll find somebody else to help you. Like, just be a solid individual, a solid man, man. And um, I really, really, I love KD, love Kiefer. Not just because he's an NBA player now, but because of the man and the father that he's been, that he is. Been a father since teenage years, you know? And I was a teenage father for sure. But he was before me, he was a teenage father. And um, just saw him do it, what he was doing, being a basketball player. This shit was always for real for him. Always being in a league, being a black basketball player was never just like oh, I'm saying this for fun. It was for real for him, for him to get a scholarship to go to school for free. Cause he, him, like my family, we ain't come from no rich family. We knew we, I had, I got an academic scholarship. He got an um, athletic scholarship. But in school, KD was an excellent student. I think like KD graduated, he was like number two overall in his graduating class at Marshall, at Marshall High School on the west side of Chicago, like number two overall. So he was never a dumb jock. Smart as hell, always super smart, and never tried to hide it. I, I always respect KD for that, man. But um, watching him play in an NBA game is, like, surreal to me, y'all. Like, I promise y'all, we used to sit, before we used to go hoop every single day, all the time we used to hoop, we used to watch Sebastian, Sebastian Telfair's Through the Fire documentary. And we used to watch that before we went to go hoop. When we came back from hooping, we would watch it. Because that was just motivation of a dude in the projects in the hood. A small guard being a lottery pick, making it in the NBA. Achieving his dream when people thought he couldn't. When people was doubting him. And taking the world by storm because they feel like he was too small and all this and all of that. And just making it happen. And that was inspiration for Kiefer. Right? It turned into inspiration for me. Not in, a, in an athletic way. But in an academic way. But for him, in academics and athletics as well, it, it was both for him. You know what I mean? But he took that movie, inspiration from that movie, from life circumstances, from him being in the hood. You know what I'm saying? Living in, in, living, in, living in the hood. Like me, we, we was both in the hood. You know what I mean? Living in the circumstances, having to go through all these crazy hoods in Chicago, him being from Terratown. You know, we all, we, he coming to my, my spot, we going through. We had situations where... And I didn't told it in the other videos. We didn't have situations where dudes tried to do tried to get out on us. That's because we just we were just new dudes in the area. And ain't nobody know who we was. You know what I'm saying? And we had to defend ourselves or not even just we didn't have to fight, but we had to show you wasn't afraid and like, you know, um, um, take up for ourselves. You know, and, and to see him come from that 
So like, man, my boy, my brother then played all over the, all in different continents, everywhere, trying to make this dream come true. And now that the dream didn't come true, congratulations, my brother, man. My brother played his first NBA game the day after his birthday. That's special, y'all. That is truly, truly special, man. And um, Keith is a special brother, a special young man. Very special. Not just because of athletic abilities, but for what he made of, the heart that he got. Always been a solid brother, man. Love, love KD, like, for life. Love all of my boys for life. But this video is about Kiefer. Love Kiefer the life, man. It's times me and Kiefer ain't talking in a while. We get on the phone and pick up light right where we left off. We see each other. We get the clown like we used to do in school all the time. Cause he know it's genuine love like that, man. My mama know his mama. I know his brothers and sister. His brother, his brother and sister know my family. All of that, man, is the same way, man. I'm just so happy for him. That's a hood legend, Chicago legend, man. My brother started an NBA game today, y'all, <laughs> and I just couldn't be more proud of y'all. Beautiful thing, man. Congrats, bro. Keeper, you see this? I love you, bro. You did it, man. You achieved the ultimate dream. For